Okay, welcome back guys. As promised, I am back with an update on my 2017 Nissan Maxima. The last time we did an update or review was around, I believe it was 111,000 miles. Uh, currently, I have 129,000 miles. Um, a couple of things have changed since uh, we last talked. Um, had some issues with the transmission. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. So, I bought the car uh, pre-owned it was actually a demo it had 5,900 miles by the time I got it I bought it in 2017 February 2017 for probably 29,000 some change and I've been doing all the maintenance as needed and everything was cool up until about a hundred and twenty three thousand miles like something really started happening around then I started noticing in uh increased rpms like unnecessarily like if i was just going uh, you know a short distance from a traffic light the rpms would just be crazy high like for no reason um some of the shifts just didn't feel right so we'll go over some of the hints and things that i i found out i got the yorkie next to me so i could hear things so basically i started experiencing things i'm going to show you guys two video clips that were taken the day that i actually dropped the car off um both of them kind of show the same thing where i was at a light i called myself just you know you you, you kind of know how you drive like you, you're just basically trying to get up to like 40 50 miles an hour you're not stepping on it flooring it or anything like that and you'll see the rpms just were really crazy so a couple of the things that i noticed were i actually noticed this from the door that when i put it in reverse there's a really what i'm going to say compared to a conventional transmission, a really long lag time between uh, when it would actually shift from drive and the reverse. I wasn't sure if that was normal because this was the first time I had an experience with a CVT, but that had always been there, so I kind of just poo-pooed it. Um, so gradually what I started noticing is that closer to around like 120,000 miles, again, the transmission would do wonky things. Um, particularly in the morning like when it was kind of cold i mean the car is usually in the garage overnight but you know obviously the garage is not heated so it's not warm like the inside of the house but when i would leave and pull out onto the main road um the rpms would just be like really crazy high and you'll see it's very similar to what i'm going to show you in these two video clips um when i was on the expressway and i would try to pass even if I was in sport or normal, I still felt like the RPMs were like stupidly high, but I wasn't feeling the power. The, the power loss started to gradually get a little bit more noticeable uh, as the mileage started to build up. The car was still technically drivable. It was many of the issues that I was having were not as noticeable on the highway as they were on stop and go traffic. Stop and go was a little bit different. I would see the high rpms uh that happened a lot um i can't say that the judder like that shaky feeling was it was definitely there but i wouldn't say it was consistent like it was like every now and then i would get this feeling of like the vibration from the transmission so let's take a look at the two videos and let you guys see what this looked like this was taken both of these videos were taken the day that i dropped the car off um, basically, prior to me dropping it off, I had taken it to the dealer. They had plugged it up. I, I actually showed these two videos to them. They plugged it up and they actually found the code. So you can probably scan for the codes yourself. Um, I don't know if I have the codes in the paperwork, but I'll try to let you guys know because I'm trying to look through it. And I don't want to waste your time. Um, but they definitely picked up a Jutter code. So you may be able to pick that code up if you buy your own scanner. Um, but they picked it up. Obviously, uh, what a lot of people don't know is you really can't repair these transmissions. Um, it's either replace it or get a new car. So I made the operational decision to replace the transmission. Uh, we'll talk about the cost later. Um, I made the decision to replace the transmission because it didn't make sense for me to go buy another used car that's already overpriced. They're going to tack on the transmission cost anyway to the new car, and I'd still be paying for a new transmission. And then if the market corrects itself, then all of a sudden now I got this used car that is never going to be worth what I owe on it, like forever. So I made the decision just to eat the cost of this transmission and move on. So we'll go over all that after I show you guys this video. So stay tuned. Check out these two videos. These are pretty much two different traffic lights I was stopped at. 
and you'll kind of see like the crazy RPMs that I experienced. So I'll be right back. Now that you guys have seen that so the history is basically i dropped it off they gave me a rental car for like a week um it was a i'm gonna guess and say it was a 2020 nissan Sentra that also has a cvt transmission so i was able to kind of drive uh, a car with that, that was actually newer than mine uh, i think it had 10,000 miles on it but i got to see what eh, kind of sort of like a, a more functional cvt was feeling like and it definitely was different um, I wasn't feeling a lot of the things that I was feeling with my car. Uh, the reverse feature just felt a little bit smoother, like I didn't feel it. Um, and I feel like it engaged a little bit quicker. So I got the car back in about a week. It drove completely different. Um, I don't feel that ugly shift into from drive to reverse or the other way around. Uh, it definitely feels a lot smoother on the highway. All the acceleration, everything's back to normal. Um, so let's talk about the cost of the transmission. So I kind of show you guys the price sheet. Basically, the transmission itself, it was a remanufactured one. That that was, uh, what, $2,400, and then it was all, all the various parts. Uh, the labor itself, and I'm not sure if I showed this on the clip that I got, but the labor itself was like $2,200. So half of it was transmission, half of it was the labor. So it was about $5,000 for this new transmission. So again, I did make this decision based on, it didn't make sense for me to get a new car. I'm not gonna do another one of these. If this transmission fails, the car will be paid off. I don't care at that point, I'm getting rid of it. And that'll be that. So I just wanted to show this price list, uh, basically what you could be up against if you opt to do this. Um, I don't see where they scanned it. That must be on a different receipt. So, um, yeah, so that was basically my experience. I just wanted to show you guys and be completely transparent. Um, I think some of the things that probably contributed to uh, the transmission failure were engine braking. Um, probably don't want to do that. I have avoided doing that. I pretty much have stayed away from shifting into that manual mode completely. Like I have not done anything like that since then. So I'm not engine braking anymore. I mean, I would, used to do that with all my cars and never had a problem, but. Um, I remember when I picked it up, the, the sales, or not sales guy, the service guy told me, he said, you know, don't do the engine braking. So I don't know if they saw that on something. Um, and every now and then I would go and, and, you know, play around like, you know, when I first got the filter and, and I was all excited over the sound and I would basically, you know, almost drive it like a stick shift. Not all the time, but don't do that either. Um, definitely not a good idea. I know people are going to throw me under the bus in the comments, but um, it wasn't something I did all the time, but I I can't say that these tr transmissions are bulletproof and will last forever. I think I got lucky because I had been doing all the maintenance all, all along, and this is what happened. I do plan on making sure I keep all this paperwork because this is just my opinion or my feeling. I have a feeling that there will be a class action lawsuit against Nissan. They've already had ones against the, uh, I want to say the Pathfinder and maybe the rogue and there may be a third one in there it might be one of the pickups i'm not sure but there were at least three cars that had uh class action lawsuits i think they were like 2015 16 maybe 2014 something like that like they were a couple years older than mine so i would not be surprised that if there's a class action lawsuit and i actually recoup most of this money back so i'm not necessarily hanging my hat on that or didn't make the decision around that it'll be a nice to have not necessarily a need to have so if it happens i'm all in so if i can get some of this money back at some future point 
okay. <laughs> so, um, so again, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them down in the comments. I'll try to check back in and, and, and when I can. And uh, yeah, good luck, guys. I still think this is a good car. I, I, other than the transmission, I've had no problems with the car. Um, you know, other than some quirky noise, like, you know, rattles and things like that. Like, it's nothing crazy that I can't live with. So I still think it's a good car. I still stand by everything I said in the first video. Um, you know, you just want to make sure you do all the maintenance. Keep all your receipts. If you're thinking about buying one of these cars, I definitely would recommend some kind of uh, warranty on it. Get some kind of extended warranty so you don't have to necessarily eat the entire cost of a new transmission if you have to. Um, you know, I was well out of warranty. I've had this car for five years, over five years. Actually, no, it'll be five years tomorrow. So, yeah, so I, that's my only piece of advice. If you are out of warranty, make sure, you know, you're changing the transmission fluid. I think the interval is like every 60,000 miles, something like that. Um, you know, whatever the, the, the maintenance schedule is, I definitely think you want to follow that. So other than that, stay away from engine braking. Try to stay out of the manual shift gate. <laughs> so just drive the car normal. You know, it's okay. You know, I do go into sport and, you know, do my thing on the highway if I have to. But other than that, I'm not really pushing it too hard. Like I need this car to last until, you know, it doesn't work anymore. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for any future updates. I'm planning on trying to do some cosmetic mods over the summer. So I'll probably come back and show you guys that. So until then, have a good one and thanks for stopping by.